So, stuff worth doing. I'll admit that's a pretty nebulous term. What I mean by stuff is the things we do to fill our hours, whatever that may be. This idea, how we spend our days is how we spend our lives, has had a profound impact on what I've chosen to spend my time on and my life on thus far. I'm obsessed with the idea of time. I think deep down, this probably stems from me grappling with my own mortality, my fear of death. But on another, perhaps more optimistic level, I think this reflects my desire to live fully, to experience fully, to enjoy. I want to have the time of my life with the time in my life, so to speak. It seems to me that many of us don't stop and consider or otherwise attempt to modify what we spend our time on. I don't mean this in a grandiose sense, I mean it very literally. We simply follow the path of least resistance in our lives without questioning why, without questioning the path we're on. The truth is, time is a currency. It's the most valuable currency we have. In many ways, it's all we have. So, stuff. What constitutes the worthiness of stuff? Who decides? Well, you do the stuff, so I think you should decide. If you take one thing away from today, I hope you understand the power you have in deciding what's worth doing. You. I want to tell you guys a story about some stuff I did that I thought was worth doing. It was early August of 2013. I was 12 days into a project with this guy, Seth Godin, and 16 incredible humans. Uh, we, we were in New York for two weeks. Um, this was the opportunity of a lifetime for me. Uh, we'd been working together trying to bring an ambitious idea to life. It was called Krypton, an educational platform designed to help people consume specific content, organize, and learn together in person. After a grueling sprint, we had hit a pretty rough spot. We spent this particular morning debating what our next move was, essentially whether we were going to keep on pushing through or if it was time to call it quits. So let me set the stage for what was at stake here. First, Seth was and is one of my biggest influences. He's a many times over New York Times best-selling author with arguably the number one marketing and business blog in the world. He's a remarkable individual. I was literally working with a living hero of mine. Pretty cool. Second, uh, I thought this project and this opportunity might be the end-all, be-all for me. I thought this might be it. I might be devoting years of my life to it. I thought it might be my big break. <sighs> so, there we were on this fateful morning. And I was sitting directly across from Seth. He was uh, his gigantic work table. My team is all around us. And he announced we were going to shut the project down. It was over. I sat in stunned silence for a moment, processing it. And then I felt my face get hot and wet as tears started pouring out of my eyes. I couldn't comprehend what was happening, but I was bawling. <laughs> it was bizarre. <laughs> so the meeting dispersed, somberly, slowly. Everyone got up. Seth went to the kitchen, just a few feet away, to begin preparing lunch. He's a killer cook, by the way. Vegan, uh, gluten-free, primo stuff. And I got up, and I started sort of wandering like a zombie, tears still pouring out of my eyes, and I wandered near Seth. He was cutting cucumbers. <laughs> he looked up at me. He said, Grant, what's going on? And I said, well, no, I didn't say. <laughs> I tried to say something. What came out was something like, I'm, di I'm, di I'm di decompressing. <laughs> it was a weird moment. <laughs> and uh, Seth was obviously confused, and he looked at me. He said, what's going on? I just shook my head. I was crying. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and <laughs> he paused. He stopped cutting cucumbers. He got this really funny look in his eye. He grabbed a slice of cucumber, and he shoved it directly in my mouth. Obviously, I was startled, but by instinct, I bit down, and like magic, the spell was broken, and I started breathing normally again and had a sense of, uh, of control. And Seth said to me, Grant, do you know who Bob Dylan is? 
and added, yes, of course. He said, if Bob Dylan was on the hook for a Grammy with every single song he made, he would have made one song and he would have quit playing music. Anything worth doing might fail. It might not work. Hmm. It might not work. Stuff worth doing might not work. It may fail spectacularly, and that's okay. I would argue might isn't actually part of this equation. It will not work. Your life will not work, at least not in the way you expect it to. Nothing ends up exactly how we expected it to, and that's okay. But it's these expectations that get us in trouble sometimes, primarily around this thing, yeah. This big, bright, shiny object, literally here, uh, in the sky. We put it on a pedestal and call it success. Success won't be what we expect it to be either. Even when we've achieved the thing we think will fill us up, when we've gotten our dream job, when we've made it, if, if we don't love the process, we'll be empty regardless of so-called achievements. The process consists of our hours and of our days. How we spend our days is how we spend our lives. Our lives are the process. They're not success. So the inevitable question, now what? Where do we go from here? When we've achieved what our dreams are or what we think our dreams are, what happens next? With Seth working on that team, on that project, that was it. That was my big break, and we failed. So now what? Will I ever get to work on that scale again? Will anything I do be as worth doing as that? Now what? Well, the good news is, that's up to me. I get to decide what success is. We can dwell on failure, or we can move on. You get to decide what success is, too. We collectively and individually get to decide what motivates us, what we want to spend our time on, what's worth doing. Now, ooh, this is where it gets a little tricky, a little bit messy, because even though we're the ones doing this stuff and we should decide what's worth doing, there are a lot of voices telling us what to do. There are a lot of voices screaming for our attention and telling us what's worth doing, that we should be doing X or we should be doing Y or we should be following these rules or conforming. But the thing is, that's their game. I don't mean this in a paranoid big brother there, but I mean it matter-of-factly. You need to play your own game. You need to choose what's worth spending your life on. Success is this thing that we're chasing, but we can redefine it. We can do what's worth it for us. It's really difficult. Chasing the things we want to chase is tough. Chasing the stuff that gives us butterflies is tough. Sticking around after the butterflies have gone is even harder. And emerging from those flames is something else entirely. However, when you're fueled by a true, honest self-motivation, it's pretty fantastic. It's pretty fantastic. Okay, the real way forward. Here we go. <laughs> I think this applies for all sorts of people. It doesn't matter what you're studying, what you want to do. It doesn't matter if you don't care about your career. Uh, for me, it's creative, creative stuff, but it applies across the board. Uh, whether you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or you want to be a karate instructor or a software engineer, it still matters. It's way, way easier to follow the path that is expected and respected, the one that makes sense in other people's versions of your life. However, this is our time. This is the time we're spending. And it's really the great opportunity of our generation. It's easier than ever to pursue things you want to pursue, to chase the stuff you want to chase. New tools, technology, better access to resources has made it easier than ever. I think the pain of stuff worth doing is that it's difficult in so many ways. It, it requires consistent effort. 
You have to show up every day and do the work. You have to put in the time and the energy. The beauty of this is it's never too late to start. You know, I look at my mom and dad kicking ass in their 50s, reinventing themselves, reconsidering what's worth doing at this stage in their life, evolving. That's pretty cool. So, I'm gonna leave you with a couple things. This is our time. This is your decision. What you spend your time on is up to you. I can't give you the answer as to what that is. I can't tell you what's worth doing. I can only open the door and invite you to seek fulfillment on your own terms to define happiness and worthiness and success on your own terms. And it won't be easy. When you go down this path, you're going to look stupid. You will fail over and over again. You'll feel awkward and uncomfortable. You have to get over that. You have to get over everyone else. You have to get over yourself and your big, stupid ego. Today is day zero. You can Stop playing by rules that you tricked yourself into believing in, and you can start discovering stuff worth doing today. I promise you, it's worth it. Thank you.